Hello everybody and welcome to the Prop Shop, your guide to prop and costume making. I'm Bill Duran and today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable little vacuum forming machine. Vacuum form machines are extremely handy for props and costumes if you want to make lightweight hollow pieces like a mask or maybe like a shoulder piece or if you want to make multiple copies of something, these things are really, really great to have. They vary in size and design. This one's really tiny, but you could just scale it up. Feel free to play fast and loose with this setup. This particular design is based on one that Fawn Davis did. He had a video right there that you ought to go check out. Very similar to how I did this one. Uh, he did some different stuff with the frame. Uh, so definitely go check that one out. In fact, if you want to make a really big, amazing, vacuum forming table. Uh, Fawn's got a video over on the Stan Winston School that is worth every single penny. I recommend you go check that out. Both of those resources will be linked below. Also keep in mind that this can be done for really, really cheap. If you buy your vacuum and your toaster oven used, you can get them really cheap and you can do it with fairly basic tools. I would say if you had to, you could probably do all of this for under, I don't know, 50 bucks. Let's get started. First is the frame. I bought all of these pieces at the hardware store and um, some of them at the office supply store. The bulk of the frame is made from aluminum angle pieces. Uh, these were cut, you could use a miter box and a hacksaw to cut them or a bandsaw to cut them at that nice 45 degree angle. I cut mine to length so that they would fit inside of the metal tray that comes with my toaster oven. Uh, and then once I had the pieces all cut out, I lined up the corners using a one, two, three block. And then I could put the angled corner brackets down, braces, corner braces. I could put those down and draw where I need to drill a bunch of holes. Then I went to my drill press. Of course, you could use a handheld drill if you've got it. And I drilled out the holes for these screws, but I also countersunk them on the other side so that the screws I was using could uh, lay flush. This surface is where it's going to clamp down on your plastic and you don't want your screw heads being proud. Then I could screw together all of the corners of my frame. This left a frame that is nice and sturdy. Of course, uh, this needs to be clamped together with another piece for your plastic. So I made two of them. Ta-da! You can use your frame to cut out the exact size of your plastic when it comes to vacuum forming. And then using some binder clips, uh, your plastic gets clamped between your two frame pieces holding it perfectly in place. For my setup, I also cut a hole out of the tray that goes in the toaster oven so that my frame could fit right in there and then I could slide the whole thing into the toaster oven holding it suspended over the heating elements. Of course, if you don't have a setup quite like this, you could suspend it a number of different ways. You could just use some spring clamps and, and hold it during the heating process, or you can put those one to three blocks in there and rest your frame on top of it. You've got a lot of options. Speaking of toasters, I need one. Be right back. Ta-da! This is our old toaster. We decided it was time to retire it and get a new one. Uh, whatever toaster you go with, sure you could buy a new one, but get a used one from a secondhand store. Uh, the important thing is once you use plastic in this, don't use it for food anymore. That's a bad idea. The next thing we need is our vacuum form table. This is just a wooden box with holes in it. I made my holes out of pegboard because I had some lying around. I just traced it out using my frame because this frame is gonna go all the way over it. Then I cut out my wood pieces using my favorite saw. Uh, I like my band saw. Whatever saw you've got will work just fine. When you cut out the side pieces for your vacuum form table, you wanna drill a hole in one of those sides. This is for the hose for your vacuum to go into. I used a Forstner bit on my drill press to drill out the hole. It was just a little bit small, which is good. You want it to be snug. I used a drum sanding bit on my drill press to widen that hole just a bit. Again though, I want that 
to be nice and snug to have a nice seal. Then all my box pieces were assembled. You could just wood glue these together with some clamps that would probably hold it just fine or use some screws or nails or in my case a nail gun because it's awesome uh, to put the whole thing together. And that's it. You've got all the pieces you need to start vacuum forming stuff. Now there are lots of techniques and materials you can use to make vacuum forming bucks and we'll go into that uh, in a future video. Uh, but for this one I just grabbed whatever I had laying around like a, oh, a sanding block. Why don't I just do a vacuum form pull of that? Your plastic material gets clamped into your frame. For this one, I used a thin piece of styrene plastic, but you could use PETG or uh, acrylic or ABS plastic. I like the styrene. It gets clamped into the frame, slid into the toaster, and then you turn the toaster on. I use the toast setting so that it had heat on the top and bottom, and then you wait. It shouldn't take too long to heat up your plastic, uh, you'll see it start to bow on the bottom. You don't want that to touch any of the heating elements, but once it does bow significantly, it's ready to go. Put your vacuum form buck on the little table, turn on your vacuum, then pull out your frame using gloves. It's gonna be really hot. And then press that whole thing right down on your vacuum form buck. It'll pull the air out and suction it right down to the surface of your piece. Then you can let it cool and trim off the extra plastic and pull your plastic off of your vacuum form buck. This leaves a thin shell that is exactly the outside copy of your original piece. And there you go. You have successfully vacuum formed a thing. There are some considerations to make, of course. Uh, don't use PVC plastic in something like this. That's a really bad idea. It's really toxic. Like I said, I like styrene and PETG, especially if I'm making visors. I use the PETG plastic because it's clear. Also, your vacuum form buck will heat up because you're putting a hot piece of plastic on it. Don't use anything that could melt. I like using Hydrocal for the uh, vacuum form bucks that I do normally. Again, we'll dive into that deeper in a future video. Also try to avoid deep undercuts, anywhere that the plastic will have trouble getting pulled off of your model. That's it, everything you need to know to build up your own vacuum forming machine. Thanks for checking out the video, you guys. We have some projects coming up that will utilize this here, so make sure you subscribe and you will not miss them. Also, of course, check out some of our other prop and costume making videos. There's a whole bunch of them in there. We're almost at like 300 videos. So dive in there and check them out. Of course, if you make your own vacuum forming machine, I want to know about it. So let me know in the comments down below or yell at me on Twitter. That's at Chinbeard. Hey, Bill, have you seen the toaster? Uh-oh. I gotta go.